Let's get ready to podcast. We are of shadows. We run straight to the battle. We're gonna rise up and roll like a lion. We're rolling. Oh man, we're rolling, 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 rolling. 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 Keep those keep ro- doggies rolling. Oh, no, I'm not songing. I'm not songing. Woo! I'm not songing a song. No, you're not. It's not a Monday, man. It's Monday, bro. Monday podcast. We like to start your week out with energetic, random noises. Energetically. <laughs> we want to be like, we want to be like fireworks for you. <laughs> Starting off your week with a bang. <laughs> that's not really, that's not a bang. <laughs> I could do this for a long time. I know time. you can. I'm just going to let you roll, man. <laughs> no, no, no. I was, I was you know like, what? For I a lot of people, their up. Mondays are so drab. It's almost like, ah, oh, a whole week. And we're like, you know what? You're alive. You're alive. You you get to go do stuff on a Monday? Yeah, I know it's not always easy. I know it's not always fun. But you are breathing. Breathing. You exist. You're breathing existing. Take a big breath in. <laughs> okay, maybe don't take that big of a breath in. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah you're alive. You're Dude, alive. And I'm we alive. both and we have rally caps on. Both of our hats are backwards. We're backwards. I've got my buttons all the way to the top. Yeah, you, you look a, nice today. If you're on a YouTube channel, you can see that. I'm you didn't dapper. shave, but you look but you're looking I you're, did shave. You did not. Oh no, not down here. Well or that's here. a part or <laughs> Okay. Right <laughs> you shaved your back. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, didn't expect oh. to get so vulnerable. <laughs> All right. I'm just joking. Um, so this uh, podcast, what are we talking about? We're talking about healing, breakthrough for healing this today. Healing. We got a guest. Breakthrough for healing. JD King. JD King I can't is wait coming, for people to hear this. Coming interview. up next um, after a little break, he's going to come on and he's going to talk about. He's got such great things to say. This about guy healing. is awesome. He's and been he, digging into healing. He's got a massive book. That and he is for. He is going after it yeah it's been pretty it's pretty amazing great great guy great friend he's but this book is just incredible just massive the thing he's doing so he's going to put this out to be a great resource for people for healing but he's got some great stuff to say on this podcast cannot wait for people to hear it we've been talking about healing the past two weeks this will be our third week of it and breakthrough for healing we hope a lot of you guys are grabbing on to this believing yeah, for, for sure. healing speaking healing over your life. healing is right.com yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm excited for this podcast yeah so it's pretty fun so we're going to keep this nice and short and sweet this first part are we you and him are going to talk about the nitty-gritty things godly things so um we're talking about breakthroughs and stuff like that so i thought you know i always had a question like did you ever get away with stuff as a kid uh like when you were younger, uh, or you, uh, you know what a better question is? Your brothers, did they ever get away with my something? My brothers were horrible. That you were like, how can they can get away with it? Because you're always. the oldest, right? I got in trouble for it. Yep. Yep, you're in trouble, and it's always like, Those how come guys they can get just, away with it? Yep. Who's, who's youngest, Brian? Brian's the youngest. Did he get away with the most? He did. It's always the youngest, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'm by the, the time they're just, I think by the time they're the, you know, like he was a third. I think the parents are just worn out. So they just don't care. They're just like, you know what? <laughs> just <laughs> raise yourself. <laughs> Your mom's coming on next week. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, well, I got some things like kids get away with that you can't as an adult. Okay. Because I started thinking about growing up, getting breakthrough for healing. And some people, you know, they call. I'm trying. You to don't t- have to tie I'm it in. It doesn't it have in. anything to and do then, with like, it. And then, like, if you're old and you got a hip problem, <laughs> uh, you just got to think, man, I wish I could get away with this. Oh, actually, it's funny because things that you can get away with a ki- as a kid, you can almost get away with as an old person. Yeah, just it's the in between years. Yeah, it's the in between years that you can't get away with it. But you yeah, can naturally there's a lot of stuff you can get away with. Because the first one is like peeing your pants. <laughs> what? You can't. You can do that. This as a kid. brought you're on like, whole new meaning when you like, got old to the old. Just talk about kids. <laughs> Why'd you have to do that? We just. Well, I mean, some of our like, audience <laughs> is just now just like oh. off. Well, some of them are like, oh, I do that. Just fast forward <laughs> to just. Hey, hey. Just fast you know, forward. Fast it's, it's okay. I mean, okay, okay. Fast forward to the part with JD. This that's is, all right. We'll edit that out. Going we'll edit that out. No, we won't. Um, so, ping your pants. Is we don't even one. know how to edit. <laughs> I don't know. Who does these things? How do I don't these even go know out? how this is happening. Um, sucking, you, sucking your thumb. You can't do that anymore as an adult. You shouldn't. It's frowned upon. Yes. So, did you ever suck your thumb when you were a kid? I did not. I did not either. Not that I remember. Not that my parents told me. No. I did a lot of other dumb things yes <laughs> um kids can also uh, call people out now but they might say like oh you smell bad 
Yeah, you know, they have do you ever had that? Too. Or they're like, why yes. does your face look like that? Yeah, that's one. That but I you got. are, but that is Charlie. true because people who are, you know, further along in life, I think filters, you know, filters come into life when you're young. You know, you don't have those filters. Yeah, really young, and, and the then older it, you get, you're like, I should probably not say that. But then the, the older, then the you, older get, you get, you're you like, say it again. You lose those filters again. Pastor Tom said some things to me, <laughs> and I'm like, what? I was what? not going to even Tom? bring him into this. <laughs> I wasn't in. He's not at that age. No, he's. he's what are you he's, talking about? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> um, next thing is breaking, <laughs> breaking things. I mean, his wife listens, but I don't know if he does. <laughs> She won't tell him. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. Um, breaking oh, things. So man. kids, you know, your kids, have they ever gone through a store and broken something? And you're like, and they don't really have to. Do they pay for no, it? No, I pay for it. Yeah, it's like the parents. But you can't do that now. You can't go through a store, break something, and go. Oh, well, I can. So I'll pay for actually, it. Actually, I did. I do because uh, they don't make aisles super wide. <laughs> it's the store's fault. It's my hips' fault. Well, it's <laughs> like funny. I can't see that thing coming. I mean, it just. Walk into it. I had a moment the other day where I had a Yankee candle. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> no, it was a Woodwick candle. Not that I, I mean, not that it matters, but I don't. No, dropped. it's just your. Okay. A what? What? What are you laughing at? I, just, I don't know. I what are you, are you shopping for candles? Or are you just, what are you doing? I mean, yeah, I like my house to smell good. All right. <laughs> this is apple wood and it's a Woodwick. The ones that crackle. Oh, yeah. I like this. And then um, I dropped it. Well, it was on the shelf when I was looking at. It's it actually shatter? funny. I was looking because I was looking at scales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite, a, and then it, it fell and broke. Yeah. On, off the shelf, and uh, I just went to the girl and said, "Hey, I dropped that. Um, do I have to buy it?" What'd she say? She goes, "No, it happens all the time." Huh? And she just sweeped it up. And usually I usually buy five year olds, but I went on my way. I said, "Yeah, I don't know where the kids was that did that, <laughs> but you may want to chase him down." <laughs> um, drooling on people, another thing you could do as an old person. <laughs> But not as a as not. well married, even a married person. I mean, if if we're watching a movie, you know, and Gina falls asleep, she's she leaning over or something. You? I'm not gonna say she doesn't. She drools, does she? I'm um, listen. <laughs> Gina drools. Th- there's a I good mean, chance she'll never listen to the podcast. That's true. <laughs> and her mother will never tell her. Um, walking around naked. Let's just not. Yeah, even, okay. Just keep on stealing. <laughs> if a kid accidentally steals something, get caught. People just going, it's okay. You know, don't worry about it. He's just, you know. Wait, say it again because I'm still stuck on the walk around naked thing. Well, as old people. Are- <laughs> well, I'm just thinking like I have stayed at some people's houses, you know, where I'm like. What? I, where, where I have to use the restroom and you're like, man, do you, do I think because it's three in the morning, will they be in bed? Will they be? If I just run out and not put my shorts on, if I just run out to use the bathroom. <laughs> Well, I get caught running to the bathroom. <laughs> like with just with nothing on? Well, I mean, you know, like it's kind of a it's kind of daring, isn't it? Do you want to put your shirt on and stuff, like just go to the restroom? It's kinda of like American Ninja. So then they could be like, <laughs> Dustin just walks around in his underwear and like, Well, no, I I I was well, I did, but I was just trying to get to the bathroom because I thought everybody's in bed. I didn't know you yeah. guys I didn't realize it's really only eleven and you guys were having a party. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what the noise was. <laughs> I didn't realize your toilet was downstairs. All right, what was the next part? I'm I can't past remember. It now. That's why you always take a robe. Um, if a kid accidentally steals something, gets caught, you know, there's like, no such thing as accidentally steal something. <laughs> if a kid accidentally, <laughs> of course, steals something, and they t- they might, you know, yeah, they might laugh it off or like, hey, put that back. You can't something else because they don't understand. Yeah. It's another thing that something old, else you could do <laughs> as an old person. <laughs> old people accidentally steal things all the time, but sometimes they're just like, I don't care. Um, but if I get caught stealing, I go to prison. Like, I don't understand this thing. The, 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 this the, is the, way better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> the last two. Well, now you put the old people on it. You're picturing people that you know. No, I just know how much trouble you're going to get in for this podcast. What? No way. Just because I mentioned a couple people. of people. What? Jim no. Weedman. What about him? Um, playing with disgusting things. So if you catch your baby playing with, it's uh, you know, like with, dirty things like or it might like pee on itself or something like that and you're what? like oh but if i pee on myself it's just it's, 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 like this unsavory. podcast is another jd thing. is not gonna want to oh, be on this podcast and this then, is not uh, the one he wanted to be on yeah yeah that's true well yeah and then stating the ultra obvious so little kids remind you know us of like a constant tweeter um who just states like i'm eating food huh ah, this <laughs> this toy looks like a train it is a train 
<laughs> well done. Okay, so those <laughs> are the, they just state the obvious. Yeah, that works. But if in, I said that, works like, in younger and older too. Huh, yeah. This is a computer. <laughs> yeah, but it works. Yeah, that yeah, it does works work both, both ways. ways. Yeah, that's actually and funny. That's really good. And it was really good. Yeah. That was actually really informative. I didn't think about that, but it yeah. does relate. So the younger you are, the more you can get away with. The older you are, you can get away with. So if you're yeah. our age, you got something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I look forward to life. I this love, is I love a life. very positive conversation. I love life. And this, this is, is how we're going to get you to break through. And so after this, you're going <laughs> to... JD's going to love this. We're going to cut and go to JD King and you, you're going to talk yeah. about healing. It's, gonna get, it's actually going to get better. It's, it's going to get serious. It's going to get better and serious and I'm not going to be here anymore. So, um, watch no, these, this is great. Yeah. Watch these commercials and we'll be back right after this. Be Fierce Conference is coming to Kansas City on June 10th, 2017. Be Fierce is a movement that pushes men to be more than spectators and challenges them to become who they're meant to be. If you want to be a real man or know someone that should be, register now at BeFierce.com. Healing is Right is a website and an app that has free resources for healing. It contains free music written specifically for healing, testimonies, a prayer wall, and much more. On the prayer wall, you can request prayer at any time and even pray for others. Everyone knows someone's sick, so help us help them. Available now on the App Store or Google Play. All right, here we are. Uh, I'm excited to have my friend J.D. King with me, and yeah. we're, we're recording this over FaceTime, so uh, yeah. I am not a professional podcaster, so... Um, I'm pretty impressed with myself. I have earbuds in because uh, last time I did this with Galbraith, we had like Echo. And I thought, I'm having JD King on here. I have to be a little more professional. And uh, so thanks for being on, man, with us. I'm super excited about what God's doing in your life. I think sure. I was telling you, James asked me, you know, is there anybody we want to interview for this week? And you're the you're really the only name that came to mind for me. Um, oh, that's, that's That's kind. I know that you've thrown yourself into healing and, and what God's been doing, not just even today, but throughout history. And you got a new book coming yeah. out, or I don't know <laughs> when it's coming out, but you got a lot of stuff going on with it, at least. You bet, you bet. I'm hoping uh, to do a Kickstarter campaign here in the fall, September. Yeah. You know, re regeneration, you know, yeah. a history of healing and Christianity. Check yeah. Facebook. I'm going to be spreading it around. If you want to read about all these great stories in history, I think it'd be a great thing to check out. Yeah, let's do that. Even now, we'll we'll remind everybody. But where where can they go? What what Facebook page should they go to? Well, I you know I'm kind of getting some of that figured out now. I, yeah. I do have a, a blog called Regeneration Book uh, at, at dot blogspot dot com, and you can go on and sign up and get updates about it. Yeah, which is awesome. And when you get that Kickstarter up, we'll be sharing it through our through Healing Is Right and stuff. We want to awesome. make sure people get on and support that, and we'll make sure we push that through. So. We'll, we'll make a commitment even on our end. We're going to make sure to give to that because I really feel like this book needs to get out. But why don't you tell us a little bit about what you learned as you were doing this book. Maybe tell us what the book is about a little bit, and we'll talk sure. about some stories maybe. Well, you know, uh, uh, what's amazing is I've studied, I believe healing is actually a much more common Christian experience than many people believe. In fact, I think that it may be one of the signature you know, Christian experiences, if you will, throughout history. I mean, whether you talk about Catholics, whether you talk about you know evangelicals, I mean, it, it, it's shocking. You know, Charles Spurgeon prayed for the sick. Uh, even like uh, Martin Luther, he, he spoke against healing, but he prayed for three or four people. And <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, and uh, uh, you can read about like you know all these different people. I mean, that that you know, so it's a really common experience. R. A. Tory, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you name it. I mean, even Billy Graham was talking about his sister getting healed one time, and. You know, not everybody's like as wide open, but there's a lot of that being experienced. It's what drove early evangelism in the church. All of Europe was pretty well converted through missionaries, you know, praying for the sick, driving out darkness. I mean, it's, it's huge. That's amazing, man. And so it, it's a, I think it's maybe one of the defining characteristics of Christianity. And that's kind of my thesis in the book. And But I, I don't want to just make a thesis. I want to tell these amazing stories yeah. of people actually experiencing God this way. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's funny because I've always said, you know, a lot of people may not believe in healing until they need it. And yeah. uh, they, their faith tends to rise a little bit when they need somebody to pray, uh, sure. you know, pray for them. 
And one of the things I noticed as you, uh, you know, went through the book, this is, can kind of be a little bit of a, a negative, but is a lot of the guys who float in it um, kind of got caught up a little bit, maybe even in themselves and some of the things okay. that, that ended. I thought it's super interesting to watch guys move so powerfully in it and then just kind of, you know, fall off. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't, you know, it's, but, it, but the funny thing, one of the reasons I bring it up is because I think people are so afraid that God's not going to use them and yeah. because they're not perfect. And I think each yeah. one of these guys just proved, uh, yeah. God uses imperfect people, you know, what, as you studied it, what, what did you find in that? Cause I know there's a lot of people, one of the things we're trying to do is get people just motivated to do it. Healing is right. Isn't a really a ministry for us to do. It's actually a tool for people to use to do it themselves, yeah. to go pray for exactly. the sick and, and see things happen. So as you know, some people feel insecure, they're afraid to pray for people. What, you know, what do you find as you study that, uh, some of those guys went through? Well, I mean, you're, you're bringing up great points. I mean, there's sometimes struggles and issues, but I think one of the big things here, and I, I hope that everyone, you know, watching or listening to this will remember this healing is a gift, not a reward. Yeah. And That's so true. if it's, if it's a gift, then, you know, it's not about how, you know, smart you are or how, you know, how anointed you are or how, you know, whether you've lived a perfect life. I mean, sometimes the gifts of the spirit and the fruits of the spirit are two different conversations. And, uh, you know, usually uh, over time, if you don't have the fruit of the spirit, you're probably going to not continue to have the gifts of the spirit. <laughs> but, you know, there's uh, the gifts of the spirit are, are a gift. They, yeah. They're things that we get from the grace and goodness of God and, and, you know, we can contend for them. We can ask for them. We can operate in them. And my experience has been, as I've studied history, is a lot of these people, they just decided they were going to, you know, open their lives up to God. And they just kind of contended for it. And God showed up. I mean, that's awesome. not, not always the case, but most of the time that's what it is, you know. And sometimes they're out doing other ministry, maybe, you know, preaching strongly. And God starts moving in this way. And they just go with it, you know. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, a lot of times it doesn't happen all at once it's through you know experimentation and all but but uh you know every person just about in history that's operating this was broken on some level yeah Man, some I, more than others I, I love hearing that and i love you know kind of removing people's excuses to not pray for it to not yeah. go for it and i know a lot of people one of their concerns is if i pray for it and it doesn't happen you know how what does that make God look like? And, and you and I both, you know, I think we would lean on the side, but what does it look like if he, when he does do it and, yeah. uh, you know, he does want to heal. And well, I think, what do you, what do you speak to those who say, you know, um, if, if it's God's will, you know, if it's God's will, uh, what's kind well, of some of the kind of things you talk about with that? Well, I, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, people say, well, you know, uh, what if it doesn't happen? Well, you know, what if we preach the gospel and somebody doesn't respond to the, to the message of salvation? I mean, uh, th just this last Sunday, there was a girl that used to attend our church. Her mom still does, and she's really, like, far from the Lord. She came up front, and I got a word of knowledge about her having a problem with her knees. Now, I know her a little bit, but not great. But I walked over to her. I smiled at her. I asked her if there's anything going on with her knees. She looked at me and said, well, yeah, how'd you know? And I go, well, that doesn't matter. I want to pray for you. <laughs> and so I prayed for her. And then I told her that God told me uh. she got healed. And she just started weeping. And I got a message from her mom yesterday on Facebook. Said that God totally healed her. Wow. And it brought back toward the, you know, the gospel, toward faith. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but what if I just stood there and said, no, I can't really do this. I mean, yeah. There's a lot at stake. I mean, I think there's more at stake not doing it than, yeah. than doing it. Uh, That's you know, amazing, I, man. I don't think most people ever get upset when you show love and value to them, even if it doesn't all work out great. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, you know, you can never go wrong in valuing somebody, talking hope, speaking, you know, blessing and a good future over them. They're, they're going to love it, even if it doesn't work out. You know, obviously, I've prayed for a lot of people who have never been healed, and and they've, I've never had one of them get mad at me. Huh. Never once. Yeah. And, I, you know, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's the gospel. I mean, we're, I mean, what does the New Testament say? I mean, I think this comes down to, you know, Jesus told us to go and speak life, speak blessing, you know, preach the gospel, heal the sick. I mean, he told us to do this. And yeah. so we have, you know, we have no choice but to respond favorably to this. You know, to me, 
you know, Paul talks about in, in uh, Romans chapter 15 about how he, he preached the gospel by what he said and what he did and how, you know, the, he, he, he went all the over, you know, you know, showing, you know, through signs and wonders, fully proclaiming the gospel. Yeah. I, I did a horrible job paraphrasing that scripture. I love there, it. But, but, but in other words, according to Paul, fully proclaiming the gospels by what he said and what he did. So it's not enough to just have good words and good ideas. We need to be willing to show, to demonstrate. And that's not up to us. We don't have the power to do that. Yeah. But it is up to us to be a vessel to, you know, initiate, to speak, to believe. That is up to us. Yeah, that's amazing, man. What do you feel like is maybe a couple of the biggest hindrances to, to people receiving their yes. healing as you've prayed for people all these years? Well, that's a great conversation. You know, I think a lot of times uh, getting back to a little bit of that issue of whether it's a, you know, if they feel like they've behaved too badly or they, you know, they're not deserving of healing, you know, and they say, well, you know, you, but God's not going to heal me because I'm such a bad person. Huh. You know, I, sometimes I think there can be a little bit of a, you know, a, I'm too bad to be healed and, uh, and God doesn't really love me or value me. He may love somebody else, but I'm too bad to be loved. And, I, I've, I've noticed that being a little bit of, I mean, um, another one I'll, I'll be really honest with you is unforgiveness. Mm. Just, you know, holding on to bitterness and anger. It's not that that stops God, but it stops your body from receiving the power of God and the wow. glory. Of God. And I'm telling you, you know, sometimes I want to tell people, Hey, have you released everybody? Have you, have you forgiven them? Have you let it go? I mean, have you given it all to God and, Sometimes if you're holding on and harboring things, that can kind of hinder the movement of the spirit yeah. in people's lives. Yeah. Uh, I, one of the biggest ways hindrances to healing is we just don't ask for or go for it. I mean, yeah. if, if you do nothing and go for nothing, I found personally that God tends to work through people. So if no one speaks, you know, if Elijah and Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Ezekiel and Ezekiel 38 didn't speak over the Valley of Dry Bones, I'm not sure the bones would have ever came together. Yeah. Somebody has to speak. Somebody has to initiate. So there's all these people that are staying sick and having all kinds of problems because nobody's bold enough to speak a word of life. So that's probably the biggest reason why there's not more healing happening. Wow. Nobody has the guts to go for it. That's huge, man. It's funny because I had somebody not too long ago, you know, confront me on... You know, if if if, it, if healing is for today and then, you know, why don't you just go to the hospitals and clean them out? And I said, all right, take my hand. We'll go do it together. Yeah, that's right. And they said, no. And I was like, that's why we can't do it. Because you got somebody who's, who constantly yeah. speaks. They don't believe and so they're not willing to even try. And so <laughs> I said, I, I said, let's take hands. Let's do it. Well, I'm, I'm willing to go. Well, and, you uh, know. I, yeah. I was praying for people in the emergency room the other day. I mean, I was there visiting somebody else. I mean, yeah. I, I think sometimes, here, here's the thing too, okay. Jesus did not necessarily pray for everybody. This sounds controversial. He prayed for, for two people primarily. Number one, the ones God led him to pray for. And number hmm. two, the people that asked him to pray for them. So I'm kind of a believer of that. I mean, that's Good. something that you can't pray for other people. But if God's leading me to pray for somebody like that girl I mentioned just earlier on Sunday yeah. morning, yeah. if God's leading me to pray for somebody, I got to do it. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's it's obedience factor. Yeah. Secondly, people come up to me and say, hey, would you pray for me? I've got, I'm dealing with this. I always pray for them as well. But I don't just go and just randomly pray here or there or wherever because sometimes you're casting your pearls before swine in a situation like that. I mean, yeah. You know, and uh, Jesus did not pray for everybody in Israel. I love, that, yeah. I, I mean, know, yeah. I actually like co the controversy a little bit anyway. So, you know me, I won't back down from controversy. But I, I sure. love what you're saying. You know, I, I read not too long ago, and we've talked a lot about, about when Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith in his yeah. own hometown. But I looked at that the other day, and I considered that maybe their lack of faith meant they didn't ask him or they didn't bring anybody to him. Not that they didn't have a yeah. conscious mindset that he couldn't do it. And, oh, I hear, uh, hear you. And I feel like I, I love that. Hey, can you tell us, maybe tell us one or two stories, maybe boost our faith, you know, for those listening that that really need a healing touch in their body. And then then I'm going to sure. ask you maybe a couple stories, and maybe you can just pray over yeah. this group, and uh, then we'll close sure. it out. I'll tell you, there's all kinds of great stories. One of my favorite ones was there was a guy who came over to House of Hope and Healing at our church, and which is like a healing home. And he was in there, and he actually had busted one of his 
uh, his shoulder blade type thing. Uh, he was in some kind of industrial accident at his job. And uh, he actually came in there because he wanted prayer for his back, which kind of affected everything. But I reached up and I touched his, his like his clavicle bone area here. It's actually more like down in here. Yeah. And a little, a little piece of his clavicle bone was sticking up like right here, like a nub. Felt like a little pinky, you know, sticking up. And I looked at him and I said, wouldn't that be cool? Like, well, first of all, I asked him, what, what is that? And he goes, oh, they had to cut my clavicle bone. And like, I have just a little piece of it down here. Like the machine fell on it and it was way down here. And I, so anyway, I said, wouldn't that be cool if God would move that bone and reconnect it? And he's like, yeah, it'd be cool. But I'm just coming to get my back prayed for, man. <laughs> cool. So I'm putting my hand in the back and praying, but I keep coming up front and I start pushing on the bone. Yeah. I'm pushing on it. Like, you don't have to push on a bone, but like I yeah. wanted to. It's like that, you know, that, that be fierce kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So finally the bone like budges like half an inch. Oh, I'm wow. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> So I pray that, that when you tell a story like this, people get the idea it's five minutes. This is like an hour and a half later. Wow. I'm praying, I'm praying, and it moves like like a quarter of an inch every minute or two. Yeah. Just a little, like a little oh, nudge. Boom. Man. But anyway, to make a long story short, an hour and a half later, his bone not only moved all the way back up, but it's supernaturally like there's extra bone came in. Wow. He had a full clavicle oh, bone. Oh, yeah. I was like, wow, that's so awesome. Oh, that's I amazing. Mean, that, you know, that's probably one of the, I mean, you know, you couldn't see it, but you could feel it. It's probably one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And, you know, and I, I, also there's a guy that came in one time and, you know, everybody always acts like, well, you know, you come to a, po a certain point in time, there's no more hope. You know, you, you know, that we can't see anything else happen, but they brought a guy and they had a week left to live. He had some kind of severe parasite in his stomach and he couldn't even eat anything. He was originally like six foot four. Something. Anyway, and he was like 400 pounds or something originally. He was down to like 80 pounds. Oh my goodness. He's like, like skeleton, you know, and they brought him in there. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, you know, thanks a lot. They bring him in and he's got one foot on a banana pill and the other yeah. in the grave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, man. So we prayed for this guy and we started speaking over him, you know, because you got to believe God, you know, that, 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 that God has the final say in these things, not us. Yeah. Yeah. So we're praying, we're believing. I grabbed his feet. You know, I'd, I'd read over in Africa when they raised people from the dead, they grabbed their feet, you know, because like, you know, the feet are the external extremities, you know, and I'm just going to try anything. Like that's the kind yeah. of guy, yeah. like whatever, we'll try it all. <laughs> so I'm praying, I'm grabbing his feet. And finally he goes, oh, it moved, it moved. And, oh. and, and like, he's delusional. He hadn't ate like in two weeks. You're like, this guy's like withering away. You could smell death in the room. Oh man. He's wearing like a diaper, you know, it's like wow. awful. And so, like, I don't know what's happened. Apparently, he had this massive, I mean, I know this is one of your podcasts, so it's okay to say this. He had a massive bowel movement right there. Uh, and, like, like, so much, it exploded on through the, the pins. Oh, under my goodness. It got all over one of the sofas in there. Oh. They had to bring in the crime scene cleaner to put it up. <laughs> so they do this. Like, oh, I don't know. I already goodness. left by this time. Yeah, I wanted like, to. No, not necessarily other than him saying this thing, anything happened. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, God caused that parasite to move on out of his body. Wow. He, 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 you know, put it out through his bowel movement. The guy was, you know, he still had to go to the hospital. They had to put him, hook him up to some feeding machines, but the guy was totally healed. He's still alive today. And that was wow. Like, Thank you, Jesus. It was CJ, but, but, you know, and, and I can tell you, I mean, you know, those are the best stories, of course, but like yeah. there's a lot of regular every, everyday stories of people, you know, their, you know, their bones just moving a little bit, you know, the yeah. pain going away. But whether it's big, whether it's small, God can do amazing things. And we've got to b believe and contend yeah. for the gospel to be seen and felt and yeah. known in our lives. And, and, and what we need is somebody that's willing to speak. I mean, one little thing I'll say this. When you look at the New Testament, they almost always prayed commanding prayers when it comes to sickness and disease. Not petitionary, yeah. but commanding. And so the problem, we're not petitioning God to get in the middle of a situation because he already wants to get it. Yeah. What we're doing is we're using authority and power and strength and anointing and we're speaking against the enemy, against the problem, against the onslaught. Uh, you know, the Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. But Jesus says, I've come, you may have life and have it more abundantly. So we know where the line is. Yeah. So we contend, we speak, we command. 
So when I pray for like, you know, a problem, a pain, I start commanding that pain. I command you to stop. I command you to desist. So, you know, when we do that, you know, and that's what we need to do. We need to speak and command and proclaim and expect and just keep looking for something to show up. And sometimes you get a little budge, yeah. a little something. And yeah. that's time to start pushing even harder yeah. because the body will start responding even more to the proclamation of the gospel and the truth of who Jesus is. I There's a whole that, lot that can be said. I love that. That's really, uh, well, could good. you could you go ahead and command some of that for some of those listening right yeah. now? I just believe this is their right. moment right now. Just listen to this podcast. Absolutely. Lord, we know how good you are. And Lord, I will begin this prayer by petitioning, inviting you to come in with your power, with your goodness, with your mercy, wherever anybody's listening to this or watching this, that they would just open up right now. They would just invite you into the room, invite you to where you, you know, where they are, that we would just have a sense of your presence, of your yeah. goodness of your compassion, Lord. And right now, Lord, we begin to pray in your name, in your authority, yeah. with your strength. And we now begin to speak against these afflictions, against these pains. Yeah. Right now, I command whatever has been damaged, whatever has been afflicted, whatever has been been uh, brought into a place of disrepair, I command it to begin to shift in Jesus' name. I command the bones to shift. I command the the affliction, the pain, the, that foreign entity, that cancer, whatever it is, I command it to begin to shift. I command it to begin to dissolve. I command it to begin to withdraw. I command it yeah. to begin to just be filled with life and strength. And now I speak to this body, and I command that which is missing, that which has been damaged, to be rejuvenated right now in the name of Jesus. I command the cells to begin to regenerate. I command there to just be a strength to come through, a shot of life. Lord, we know in your word, Paul talks about what's translated usually as workings, but the actual Greek word is energia. Hmm. Right now, we just want that power, that energia of God, and it begins to move through the body, and it begins to cause the cells to dance and regenerate yeah. and come back to life. And right now, I command it to happen. I command the bodies listening right now yeah. to come to life, to shift, to come alive, Things that are missing to start showing up in those bodies yeah. right now. Missing things, damaged things, coming alive, filled with hope and life. And Lord, I pray for those who are hopeless, those that are filled with fear, that right now that the fear would go in Jesus' name, yeah. that hope would rise, yeah. that there would be confidence about a good future, about the things of God being known and felt and experienced, Lord. Yeah. And I just speak a hope. I speak a hope. You know, we yeah. need a hope, Lord. We need the hope of the gospel, the hope of who you are. Yeah. Let it come alive in us. And I speak life. And I pray right now, whoever's hearing this or watching this, that they would begin to respond. If they would get up. They would move what's hurting. They would try to test something, you know, that they couldn't do before. Put a little weight on the leg. Move yeah. that shoulder. Move that elbow. Begin to breathe in with the lungs that are maybe conflicted on some level just something begin to respond yeah. we've prayed we believe now let's begin to respond let's begin yeah. to expect let it be rise up yeah rise up in jesus name get up yeah let your heart be awakened let your body respond to the goodness of the gospel you know the word says that there's a resurrection and hope every time somebody gets healed it's a foreshadowing of the resurrection mm. it's a picture of where jesus is taking us and right now i pray all over that people would begin to respond, and the foreshadowing of the resurrection yeah. would be seen right now. Yeah. Lives being restored, bodies being brought to life. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, let it Ooh. be. Hey, man, man. Yeah, I felt that. If you, man, <laughs> that that raised some dead right there. So that was powerful. <laughs> man, thanks again for doing this. I I really do just want to just take a second to honor you, and um, I you know it's people write books and and do things. And I don't think people always understand how much you gave up to do that and, uh, to really help people. And I, I was joking earlier, like you did something that I wouldn't have dug for. And now I get to reap the benefit of it. So I just want to honor you for digging into that and, and really pushing all of us in the area of healing and what God's doing and super grateful yeah. to have you in our lives and, uh, and, and excited for what God's doing what he's going to do yep. in your ministry. We're believing for big things. So can yeah. they, they can find you, uh, your Facebook, just JD King. Yeah. Uh, my, my actual URL is Mr. JD King, you know, uh, forward slash Facebook.com. Awesome. Uh, you can just look JD King on Facebook. I'd be happy to friend them. Uh, 
I have a, a, a weekly blog post I put out. It's at worldrevivalnetwork.blogspot.com. They could go on there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm not on there quite as much, but it's World Revival is my handle at, uh, on Twitter. And awesome. Anyway, I love to talk to people. I want to see good things, I, and I'll be yeah. happy to pray for you, particularly through social media, just believe in good things for your life. Yeah, and then tell us one more, the book uh, website or where we can go yeah. to, and we'll be watching for that Kickstarter, but – What's the information on that? Well, right now, the only real way I have uh, for you to connect with it is I, ha- I started a blog called uh, uh, regenerationbook.blogspot.com. I do updates about it, and you can actually sign up to get uh, email updates and you know further information about it. Obviously, I plan very shortly to be doing a lot more about it. I'm going to be launching some other websites with it, and obviously the Kickstarter campaign hopefully is going to spread all over. Yeah. for people to get a chance to respond to that. That's awesome, man. Well, thanks again for doing this and uh, looking forward to everything in the future. We love you, man. You bet. Love you too, bud. All right, thanks. To see and hear more about Here Be Lions, check out our website at herebelions.org. Don't be a stranger. Be our friend and like or follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. By doing so, you will also receive regular updates and additional content. Hey guys, it's James here. If you like what you heard on this latest podcast, go to herebelines.org forward slash healing to receive a free download of our song, Miracles, off the latest Healing is Right project. We hope it encourages you like it has many others. So once again, it's herebelines.org forward slash healing for a free download. That's free. Go check it out right now man you and jd that was good hitting the hard stuff i love that guy super super proud of him and everything that he's doing i think great words he's just uh he's an encourager and i really hope people will find that that breakthrough for healing you know yeah. they'll, they'll push through and really um grab onto some of the stuff that's talked about yeah and make sure you just work out your healing it's, it's a it's a great thing and so he's going to be probably featured more um as his material starts coming out so you can look for that yeah uh on our website herebelines.org or through other mediums that we've got but make sure you get to healing is right we're talking healing this month yeah uh, get to healing is right.com get the app out of app store or google play make sure you're getting on that regularly looking at the prayer wall set up a timer on your phone even just yeah, to see like great. hey i'm gonna check this at four o'clock every day um and then be fierce men's conference yep be Fierce Men's Conference is coming up June 10th. June 10th. Make sure to get on a register. Space is limited. We can't help that. So yep. you do want to get on a register because we will run out of space. It's so only 25 sure bucks, and we did 25 bucks just to make sure everybody could come. Yeah, we just um, needed to cover the cost. Which is a super so. a super cheap price to be able to come for the uh, – go to BeFierce.com. You'll see all the speakers in the schedule, so you're getting a lot of information for that. So don't think it's just something, oh, yeah, it's just I can do it at some time. Go yeah. do it now, and um, we'll get that yeah. ready to go. Awesome. Can't, can't wait to see you guys. All right, we'll see you next Next week, bye. Bye.